This is a tutorial on providing smooth iOS-like transitions to your JavaFX application. I have a border pane, and when I right-click in the center of the border pane, it, a uh, top pane is displayed with a couple commands, A, B, and C. When I press uh, Command, for example, A, a message is logged and the bar disappears. Similarly, if I right-mouse click and left-mouse click, I get the same kind of action. And this functionally works. I've got a top pane with my uh, commands, and I can dismiss it and continue with my work in the main content. However, it doesn't quite look that professional when compared with, say, Apple products. What I'd rather do is I'd rather have that transition ease in such that it isn't displayed all 100 pixels high at once. I'd rather display a few pixels and kind of over the course of a few hundred milliseconds bring the full display uh, into effect. And I think that's especially true um, as we get more into touch applications. Uh, touch, we want to drag and have maybe some partial animations. But in this case, I just want it to look a little bit smoother. Okay, I have the same program running, except I'm providing some smooth animations. When I right mouse click now, you'll notice that after an initial small display, it grows to a height of 100. And when I press the uh, left mouse button here, or if I dismiss a, a, um, uh, the top pane by making a item selection, um, I get this, a similar kind of slow action. And this is, goes a long way to, I think, making the FX application look more like today's um, sort of standard bears, which are the, the Apple products for, for user interfaces. Um, how do I do that? I've got an animation hooked up. So rather than simply um, showing or hiding something or, or setting a, a node for the top panel or not setting it, um, I'm actually setting it, but I'm also bringing that height up um, as, as it goes along. So you can kind of see here, if I right mouse click, it starts small, gets larger. And if I left mouse click, it starts uh, larger and gets smaller. Let's take a quick look at Scene Builder. Um, I like to do as much of this work as possible in Scene Builder. And you see the border pane, and you see the top pane, and the, the button options. And even though I'm going to start my application uh, with just the main content pane and let the user get the additional options if they want them, um, I'm going to model it all out in Scene Builder so I can have consistent styles and consistent names. And it's a lot easier to, to do as much as you can in Scene Builder without having to have you know half of your design in Scene Builder and the other half in code. But I do need code, and there are some handlers that I've put on these events here. If you look at uh, the anchor pane, I have um, a mouse clicked event that will be called in both the um, for both the left and the right mouse button. Um, and then with the buttons themselves uh, up at the top, they have a, um, an action uh, called handle command. So those, those are the items. Um, I'm going to be working mostly with a um, border pane, which you will see is, is a, has a, an ID of BP. And also the H box that's in the top pane, which has an ID of uh, H box. And one other thing to note is looking at the H box, I have a um, preferred height of 100 set. So if I didn't set that, I would have just a, a, an H box taking up the space um, for the buttons. But I've got a little bit extra padding, and it's, uh, and it's important to have that because that's going to be the property that I animate in the code I'm about to show you. Um, the, there's a main that's involved, and there's a controller. And the controller is related to the FXML file we just looked at. So I have a member variable for border pane and a member variable for HBox. And I'm also recording the HBox's preferred height at initialization. So when the controller's initialized, I first uh, clear off the top component, which comes in with what you saw in the FXML file, uh, the three button HBox. Uh, I, I remove that from the top pane, and I also record the HBox's um, preferred height. Uh, it's not going anywhere, so it's there and able for me to interrogate it. Um, the first event handler mouse click, uh, checking the right mouse button, which is called secondary, I'm going to set the preferred height to zero, 
and I set the top to the H box. Now, this at this point, the screen would look like a smaller version of the top pane. It would be about like 30 or 40 pixels. Um, but what I'm going to do is animate that property um, up. I have a timeline, and there's a first frame at zero in which I've got the preferred height set to zero. So if you were to just press the pause button in between these two frames, you'd see a 40, um, uh, a 40 um, pixel high um, uh, top pane. But I'm going to take that and I'm going to move that preferred height to 100. Um, now, I'm saving it into a variable because I don't want to maintain the constant 100 in two places. It's a good practice to define them only once. And since scene builder is really where I'm doing my primary authoring, I'll, I'll have the code defer to that. And what the timeline does is it animates that height property. Um, so you can't animate a property like visible property where it's really either or in terms of showing, um, but we want to have a continuum of values. We want to be able to step through each individual uh, preferred height um, increment, and that's, that's what this timeline does. Um, the second part of the event handler is for the left mouse button. If it's pressed and the top is not showing, then I call a method uh, dismiss top. Um, dismiss top is used in this context with the left mouse button on the main content. It's also used in my handle command. So I've got a little bit of reuse going here. And dismiss top, as you might expect, is the opposite of the uh, mouse clicked. It goes at zero from the preferred height of 100 down to zero. And then I do a play. Um, and the, the last thing to go over is, is kind of an interesting side effect. Um, I started out by just setting the top to null, kind of reversing the entire initialization. I actually had to do the set top in a set on finished callback. Um, I would comment out the set top and verify that my animation was working. But when I restored this here, it was actually making it as though it had skipped the animation. So maybe there's some kind of optimization on the FX loop that's that's um, going to just not bother with the animation if we're setting something to null. But for whatever reason, it wasn't too difficult for me to provide a um, an unfinished callback. And I'm using a Java 8 Lambda. So I've got this, um, this single event here, uh, event parameter, uh, driving the call to set top. And so the result is um, when we're closing, um, we just press the mouse clicked, it goes down to preferred, and then it pops off of the screen. So that's a pretty straightforward way of adding um, your smooth uh, animations to your controls. Um, Apple does a, a little better job because some of this is built into the controls. And, and here in JavaFX, it looks like we're going to have to um, roll our own. So if there's a um, if there's something like a um, framework that you have, you might want to do this for, say, your, your main panels and provide yourself an animation. But as you can see, it's only a couple, a couple lines of code, so it shouldn't be too, um, too difficult to work with.